In this video, I'm going to tell you how to steal anything with no risk in Baldur's Gate 3. Subscribe to the Linus Wilson channel. We give you the secrets to crush Baldur's Gate 3. So I had a previous video and it was awesome. And you can do the build in, by level 4 for sure. Maybe as early as level 3. And all the gear that you need is in Act 1. But I got some comments on that video to make the build even better. So the first one is that you want to have Asterion be happy. So he needs to bite somebody. And so what do you want to do? Is you want to bite a hireling. So X Flavius X, my commenter recommended this. So you wake up, you get Asterion to bite one of the hirelings in your camp. They're not going to disapprove unlike the other parties in your camp. And they don't even need to be in your party. So you don't have to do all this stuff of dismissing somebody, put them in, you just bite them. Okay, the next thing is, uh, and so he'll get plus one to his checks. And that'll help with the uh, sleight of hand check, which is what you're trying to maximize with this pickpocketing. The other one is from Stephanie Oakleo6048, and she said that you should have your cleric, so Shadowheart, when she gets the level three spells, Feign Death, then what she can do is you have Shadowheart give several thousand coins to a merchant, and that merchant will then be her ally, and she can cast Feign Death on them. So you can't cast Feign Death on a, a neutral character that's, but if they're green, so if you get their their approval bar to green, then they'll be an ally, and they when they're in Feign Death, then they will not get mad at you for pickpocketing them. They will not move, of course. You can fail a pickpocket during those 10 turns while they're feigning death, and then pick, continue to pickpocket them again. So I have several like failed pickpockets here, and we just go on, and, and in, in a few turns later, we can start pickpocketing again. And then at the end, we just stand around instead of leaving right away, and then having somebody else come in to see if the the um, merchant is aggroed and not getting too close too fast. With feign death, you don't even, they don't ever get aggroed. So you can just stand right next to them when they wake up and they will not even notice that they've been pickpocketed. All right, so the rest of the build, it, which I kind of went through in the other uh, video, is all gear items that you can get in Act 1. There's one that's in the Mountain Pass, so uh, the key with the Mountain Pass, don't enter the Mountain Pass until you've resolved the Grove to your liking, that you've either saved it or not saved it, uh, so otherwise it you'll it kind of closes off your Grove, Grove storyline, the Emerald Grove. But all the others are in the kind of the main Act 1 region. So there's the the Shapeshifter's Boon Ring, which I have a video on. That's off the Strange Ox, and that gives 1d4 on all checks. So you can put that on um, Asterion, and you should look at that video because... It's, there is some story content associated with the strange ox, so instead of killing him if you can buy it off of him with this trick, uh, then, and I'll put the link of that video in the description, then you can get that. But you can also just kill him and, and get that. Uh, just make sure you don't aggro anybody doing any of this in the grove, so I'd recommend a fog spell. Uh, so at level three, you get the arcane trickster, and so uh, that allows you to disguise self, and you can also get Fog, right? So Disguise Self and Fog. And then at, at level 4, you can bump up Asterion's Dexterity to, eight, to 18, or even 19. But I recommend 18 if you're getting uh, the uh, Graceful Cloth, which is a, a, is sold by the uh, Crazy Egg leg Lady uh, near the fast travel there. Uh, and uh, that Graceful Cloth gives you plus 2 on Dexterity, and it also gives you Cat's Grace, which gives you advantage on rolls. So you get plus, you get the the plus two to slide a hand through dexterity, uh, or yeah, plus one. You get to 20, go from 18 to 20. So then you're like plus five on dexterity. Uh, and then you you also get the cat's grace, which you get an advantage on these dexterity checks or sleight of hand rolls. Um, and then the smuggler's ring is on the risen road and it just gives you plus two to sleight of hand and plus two to stealth. And that you just get off a, a body. Uh, and then there's the gloves of power, which you're gonna get off, I think the main dude when you encounter the grove for the first time, there's a fight with, there's a little skirmish with goblins. 
and looting those guys, the, the big one, is going to have the gloves to power. And then also you want to get the silver pendant, uh, which is north of the Nautiloid ship at X148 Y375, uh, I think. Uh, and that allows you to cast guidance on yourself. So you, to do this, you're going to want to have somebody casting guidance. And then you're going to want to have... Uh, somebody casting fog so fog so other people don't see you even if you're doing the the uh the the trick where you are feigning death the uh, other people can see you stealing so if you do it in a fog or partially obscured in fog then you're not going to get caught by other people including if the person if the the merchant is awake and then so you basically it let's kind of go through this how you would start this out you would say from camp Asterian bites a hireling that gives him plus one for happy right at your level four you're going to make sure that you have at least 18 then you're going to put on that graceful cloth from the mountain pass that's going to give you plus 20 dexterity and whenever you get an opportunity and leveling up you're going to put the maximum points in sleight of hand then you go to the merchant and you're going to or even before you go to the merchant because this is a long rest spell because you've selected Disguise Self as one of your spells as an arcane trickster, which you can respec at any time it withers. So you, if you haven't done this, you can respec Asterion from level one, including changing his abilities for 100 gold, which you can steal off of the withers. So before you start going after the merchant, you, you're going to put on Disguise Self, so you get the 1d4 on uh, checks from the Shapeshifter's Boon Ring, and you want to have Asterion and Shadowheart, so a cleric and the thief. And since we're using the, the bite, we want Asterion specifically as our thief. Shadowheart is going to give something about 2,000 gold, 3,000 gold. Should get up about everybody in the green region, 1,000 gold. They just need to be in the green region of approval. And then Shadowheart can cast uh, Feign Death. I would recommend then casting guidance before feign death and asterion casts fog and then you cast feign death asterion crouches and it may take a couple turns and then he starts stealing stuff right in the fog right so shadow heart is concentrating on guidance Asterion is concentrating on fog. Asterion's disguised. The merchant is feigning death. And then you you steal uh, with impunity, right? And so you're getting uh, all these different pluses. You're getting 1d4 from Guidance, 1d4 from Shapeshifter Boon. You're getting uh, plus 1 from Gloves of Thievery, plus 2 from the Smuggler's Ring. You're getting Advantage and you've bumped up your dexterity to 20 with a graceful cloth and you should almost never any item fail on it but you can fail with advantage at one in 400 times you can you can roll a double one and that would be a critical fail and it's also possible that you know maybe the the level of the check is so high that you, you roll a, a low number so typically uh the 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 numbers don't take into account your target roll doesn't take into account the 1d4 the 2d4 essentially uh so it underestimates the 2d4 and i think it also doesn't it underestimates your actual roll on the dice, I think on the, the 20-sided die. So you can actually steal successfully if you get less than the target roll that it shows you on the screen. But if you do fail, and they are feigning death, they're not going to get mad. Nobody's going to get mad as long as you're in fog and nobody sees you stealing. The The merchant's not going to get mad at you, who is Shadow Heart's ally. So you're able to... Uh, go back to them now you're going to lose a few turns of feign death for that right so if you fail a lot eventually they're going to come out of feign death but they're not going to get mad at you now so there's basically no need to save scum in this and you can steal whatever you want so for these there's a lot of stuff that i just don't don't even want off these merchants because i was actually dumping it on the merchants uh to sell to them and i don't want to have it in my inventory so even in my traveler's chest back in camp so but anything you want any potion any armor set you should be able to get with no risk doing this method and really as soon as level four this method should really kick in 
It's going to be even better once you get into the mountain pass, which maybe that will take you to level 5 because it might be a little harder to get in the mountain pass. But you, you can sneak in the mountain pass by the, the goblins camp, and I think that's an easier entrance. And then you just find that lady and get the graceful cloth off her, which you can steal off of her. You can also steal from her. You've got everything, and you're still in Act 1, right? So anyways, subscribe to the Linus Wilson channel. We give you the secrets to crush Baldur's Gate 3.